I hope you all remember my open source ESE design that I've made last year, and the other versions as well. That one is based on a full triple bridge of MOSFETs and the back EMF closed loop control. But this one here for today's video is based on a half bridge control. So basically half the amount of MOSFETs and half the complexity. This type of ESCs only work with those 4 wire brushless motors, meaning that we need the phase A, B and C, but also the common point of the star configuration. Since I already have so many ESCs designs and videos about this topic along these last few years, I've created a playlist so you could learn how to design one step by step, the concepts and the mathematics involved and all the interesting information. In this video I will show this half bridge ESC. What's the deal with the common point on some brushless motors, the components that I use, we'll make the circuit on a PCB and give it a few tests, and I hope that you will learn something new. Please have in mind that this circuit has no feedback and is not even close to the results of the full bridge ESC from my previous video. I'm showing you this circuit just for learning purposes. So guys, let's get started. Video sponsored by PCBWay. If you have a PCB project, you must check their services. For example, try the PCB prototype service for boards from one layer up to 14 layers. The PCB quality is amazing. Nice finish, good silk layer and exact sizes. And the production time is measured in hours. So all you have to do is to upload the Gerber files of your PCB, select the settings such as the color of the board, the size, the thickness and so on, and order the PCBs for only $5 for 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 centimeters. In just a few days you receive the PCBs so you could finish your amazing project in time and with a professional look PCB. What's up my friends, welcome back. This here is a hard drive from an old PC and I will use its motor for our today's project. And I bet that a lot of you guys already opened one of these at least once. This usually work with a brushless motor, one like this one. This motor is actually very quiet and low power since all it has to do is to spin a metal disc at high speeds. Ok ok so I know that this has nothing to do with the ESC that we will build today but I just wanted to show you inside of a basic hard drive. So when you open the metal case you will notice it is water sealed with some sort of glue or maybe a rubber gasket. This is the hard disc made out of a metal and actually this has a few different discs for more memory. This actuator here is the one that moves the needle and that reads the bits from the disc and is based on some neodymium permanent magnets and some coils. Actually we could use this actuator for a future project based on a laser and galvano actuators, so stay tuned for that. Ok so if I take out the disc we can see the brushless motor. So what's special with this motor? Well as you can see it has 4 inputs instead of 3 as the common brushless motor for drones for example. It has the basic phase A, B and C, but also the common point of the star configuration. And that's the key for this project. In order to be able to use a half bridge ESC, we need to have a connection to the middle common point of the motor. At the same time these here are brushless motors from all DVD readers. And if I open them as you can see, they also have 4 connections that are marked with A1, A2, A3 and the COM point. So what if your motor doesn't have a common connection? Actually if your motor has a star configuration, it will definitely have a common point, but it might not be connected on the exterior of the motor or is very hard to get to it. If you remember from the video where I was building a 3D printed brushless motor, I've ended up with 3 connections for the phases and one connection with all the wires merged together and that is the common point. So why is this fourth connection so important for the half bridge controller? From my previous ESC videos you know that with the full bridge control we have 3 MOSFETs connected to the high side or positive and 3 connected to the low side or to ground. On each step of the rotation we apply positive to one face of the motor with the high side of the MOSFETs and we connect another face to ground with the low side of the MOSFETs. But using the half bridge configuration, we only have the low side of the MOSFETs. 
So what we do goes something like this. We take the common connection which is the middle point between the three faces. We directly apply positive to the common point. Then we connect each face to one of the MOSFETs. If you want to energize phase A for example, just turn on the first MOSFET and off the other two. So the current could flow from the middle point to ground, only through phase A. Then on the next step, we turn off the first MOSFET and we turn on the second one for example. And now we energize phase B. So that's how we control the rotation. And for more information about this brushless control, you can see my previous videos on this topic. I actually have a few videos already, so you will understand everything. Ok, so the circuit that I propose for today is this one. It's very simple and basic. We have just 3 end channel MOSFETs connected to ground. Each one has a diode from its drain back to the battery, so the current spikes from the motor could have a path to flow through and not damage it. Also each MOSFET has a pull down, so it will be turned off by default. I also add the AMS1117 regulator for 5 volts, and to control the poles we could use an Arduino for example, but since this is a very simple design, we can go directly with a small 80 tiny 85 To control the speed we can use a potentiometer for this example, but with a more complex code we could also control the speed with a PWM input. So I've made all the connections on a prototyping PCB, starting with the 3 MOSFETs. I've then placed the AMS1117 and also made sure that with the 12 volts input, we have 5 volts at the output. And then I can add the 80 tiny. The connections are made with some copper wires on the front and the back side. We also have connections with the small resistors and diodes. I've soldered a potentiometer external to the PCB and I will use this to adjust the speed. I've used some screw terminals for the battery input and the 4 outputs that go to the motor. Ok, so now I connect the motor to my board with connections for the 3 faces and the common point. I supply the PCB with 12 volts from my power supply. And the PCB automatically starts because it has the voltage regulator for 5 volts. And by the way, I upload the code to my 80tiny85 using my shield that I've made in a previous tutorial. And I will show you this code in a moment. If you want to know how to make this shield for the Arduino Uno, how to manage the boards in the Arduino IDE, and how to upload the code to the 80tiny, see my video on this topic below in the description. Ok, so as you can see, when I increase the potentiometer, the motor starts rotating. Let me glue this tape so you can see better the rotation. Also I can increase the speed with the potentiometer. Here I also have some slow motion of the rotation. And these are the signals from each phase on the oscilloscope in case that you want to see them. We have 3 faces and when one is pulsating, the other two are off. And here I've stopped the oscilloscope so you can better see each face. At the same time, as you can see, the faster the motor spins, the smaller is the delay between the pulses. Ok, so let's take a quick look at the code and then I will tell you why this is not the best solution for controlling brushless motors and the downsides compared with the full bridge configuration. Ok, so first I define all the variables that I will use in the code. Then we set the pins for the MOSFET control as outputs and set them to low at the beginning with these registers. Then in the void loop, we read the voltage from the potentiometer and if this value is over a certain threshold, we activate the rotating sequence. And in this sequence, because this is made in an open loop control, so we don't have a feedback, all we do is to switch to high one of the faces, one by one, with a small delay in between, and that delay is created with this while statement. But then I make another while and that will chop the pulses into smaller pulses, so we can also control the power. And basically that's it. I will try to post a different code below that will use a PWM input to control the speed and also interruptions to read the PWM signal. 
Ok, so now why is this half bridge worse than the full bridge controller? Well, first of all, remember that with the full bridge control, we energize two faces at the same time. One coil has the current going in and the other one has the current going out, like this. And in this way is creating two different magnetic fields, one pushing and the other one pulling. But with the half bridge, we can only energize one phase. So that means less power and less torque. The good thing is that this circuit is way simpler. We don't have the high side MOSFETs anymore, which usually is the one that gives problems and should be made with P-type MOSFETs. We have less components and less signals to control from the microcontroller. But other bad thing about this half bridge configuration is that we can't implement the back EMF feedback anymore. Remember that for the Vilcher Zero Cross, we need two coils energized and one floating and the sum of all three signals is the virtual zero. So this time we can't do that anymore, so the feedback must be made with hall sensors. For example, these small brushless motors that we have seen before have these three small components here, with the same phase difference in between. These components are hall sensors. And as we have seen in the censored ESC tutorial, this could create hyposes while the magnets are rotating around. And by reading those poses, we can know with precision the position of the motor. Without the back EMF feedback or the sensors, the motor will be rotating in an open loop. So that means that if I stop the motor with my hand, it won't start again because it has no feedback and it can start again by its own. We need to lower the speed and increase it back again slowly. So guys, that's how the half bridge controller should work. With a more powerful microcontroller and sensors, we could control the rotation even better but trust me, the full bridge design is a lot better. I do have quite some experience with ESCs. Over the last few years I've tested many configurations and improved my design more and more, from my first PCB that was open loop, had many fails and rotated at very low speeds. And then I had the second attempt from my prototype for the Sensored ESC and the closed loop control. And after a lot of back EMF testing and code improving, I was able to make my first open source ESC that was working pretty close to a commercial one. So guys, if you want to learn more about the ESC principles, please watch the full playlist on this topic and all the links that you need are below in the description. And if you learned something new, give me a like or comment below. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, thanks for staying with me till the end of this video, I hope that you like it and the most important part for me, I hope that you learned something new. Also, I would really like to thank to all those who are supporting this channel on Patreon, that help is very important for me. And at the same time you have more links below if you want to check my Facebook page, my Instagram or my shop where you could buy my PCBs or maybe some t-shirts and more stuff. And with that also support my channel. So thanks again and I will see you in the next video.